Yes, indeed. Big Brother Bear here to give you all that you want and what you need. Today's Teach Me series is going to be about no one other than Dre Baldwin. So if you have not heard about Dre Baldwin, Dre Baldwin played professionally for nine years overseas, has written over 25 books, puts out tons of content, whether it be in the podcast format or whether it be actual videos, um, um, actual videos, and he's been doing it for quite a while. The reason I feel like he's worth highlighting is, is mainly because of his time of being a student athlete, right? He played in high school and in college, but he didn't play all four years in either in either spot. He got kicked off his team a couple times, and and he, he he's not the he's not the actual poster kid of uh, having a successful time as being a student athlete, as people would say. He didn't go to a major Division One school. He didn't go to the NBA or anything like that, but he was able to gleam a lot of the things that he learned as being a student athlete and apply it to the business world in a major way. So I feel like there's a lot of things that we all can learn from his discipline, from his mindset, from his his, his confidence, a lot of things that you can, you can just pick away from what he's doing and apply it to your game as being a student athlete and beyond being a student athlete, making that transition, because that's when a lot of people get hung up, right? Everyone's great at being um, at playing basketball, but who are you when you're not playing basketball anymore? And he's showing us um, a great example of being able to transition into that next phase of life. He's done, he's done it really well. But I think that's something you can learn from. I think that's something we can all learn from and, and do as well. Now, I had the good fortune of interviewing him a couple years back. If you haven't seen some of the interviews that I've done with Dre Baldwin, make sure you do so. Make sure you click up here. Aside from that, his latest book, Work On Your Game, this is something that I'm going to be doing a book review on very, very soon after I get it, after I finish get done reading it because um, it's already starting off really well. I actually got him to, uh, to sign this copy, so that was really cool. Now, this book is not just about being a student athlete. It's also talking about life after sports, it's talking about the, having that business mindset and how to, how to translate the things that you've learned as being a student athlete in real life principles and, and, and how to be practical by, uh, by attacking that. So uh, you need to definitely pick up this book, um, work on your game, and check out the interviews that I've done with them because they, they are some very insight, insightful pieces of content that if you haven't checked it out, please do so. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. He's caught my eye here recently because he put a, a post on his Instagram page uh, and it was talking about the Miami Marathon. The Miami Marathon, he's ran it a couple times, but this year he's not running it. And he talks about um, just the stages of what's needed in order to run a marathon. I think it's very impactful for you to be able to hear it. So I'm going to play a little bit of it now, but I'm going to play the whole clip at the end of the video. But I want to break this down in this video of why I know this would be impactful for you if you apply that same mindset to not only just being a student athlete, but just being a student, period. And then beyond that, this, this mindset will help you in achieving any goal that you have that you want to achieve. So when you think about running a race, you think about going the same speed. You think about finding your pace, finding your tempo, and keeping that that way consistent throughout that time. So before you started running this race, you didn't think about the things that may have uh, that may disrupt your your tempo. Things like sun being in your eyes, things like you may catch a cramp, things like you may get dehydrated, things like you may trip and fall, things like I don't know, you just may get tired and want to walk a little bit. You know, those things change your tempo. And it may not be things that you actually thought about beforehand, but they're real life factors that may change your pace, may change your tempo as far as running a marathon goes. Now, 26 miles is a long time to keep up the same pace. Much like going to college and school is a, is a lot to be going the same pace. So, I can, so when you think about going to college, when you think about graduating, you think about taking classes, you think about doing homework, you think about taking some exams and then being done. But what, but what, what no one tells you about the whole college process is life happens. Life happens that, that really disrupts your pace. 
in the sense of your freshman year, you're going to be bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, ambitious. You got your dividers. You got your highlighters. You're ready for war. You're ready for everything. By sophomore year, that sprint that you had and, and doggone freshman year may go down to a trot. Now you're trotting along. You're still at a comfortable pace, but you're trotting along. By that junior year, you've been hurt. You have failed some tests. You've been humiliated. You've had to drop some classes. You've not only dealt with stuff at school, you dealt with stuff back at home. Maybe your parents are going through some arguments or maybe thinking about divorce. Maybe they've lost their job or their house or whatnot. Maybe you lost your doggone family pet. Whatever that thing is, it looks different. By your junior year, by your junior year, now it turns into a medium walk. You're less, you're, le you're less ambitious, right? You've changed your major three or four times. Not sure when you're going to graduate. Your admissions counselor told you it's going to be in four years. Now it's looking like six years, right? And by your senior year, now you're just walking with dragging your feet, dragging your feet because you're not sure what you want to do. And I think it's easy in those times to think that, I'm the only person going through this. I'm the only one, I'm the only person that their parent has gone through a divorce. I'm the only person that has to think about which house, I'm, which household I'm going to go to during, uh, during Thanksgiving or Christmas. I'm the only person that has to deal with this injury that I'm going, uh, going uh, th this injury that I'm, um, I'm going through right now. It's easy to have that mentality because it does not line up with the pace that you, you, you originally thought was going to be continued throughout all four years or now you're looking at maybe six years to graduate. And what I want to do is encourage you into, into understanding that your, your, your race is your race, right? It, it, it's, it's a race against you. And you shouldn't be so bog, bogged down about, oh, I didn't graduate in four years, or I didn't do this when everybody else did it, so there I'm a failure. At the end of the day, take it from someone who graduated from college uh, with a bachelor's degree at 25 years old, senior, sleeping in a bunk bed. Take it from that person that at the end of the day, no one cares how long it took you to graduate? At the end of the day, no one cares. You know the question they ask about your degree? Did you complete it? That's it. Did you complete it? Today's the Miami Marathon. Shout out to the marathon runners out there. I've done two myself. Who knows if I'll do another one? But understand this. Even if you're not a runner, even if you're not an athlete, all of life and any business that you start is going to be just like a marathon, any career. Sometimes you're sprinting, full speed ahead, everything's working. Sometimes you're at a run or a jog. It's working, but it might not be exactly perfect, but you're still moving. Other times you got to walk or come to a trot because it's, you're doing your thing, but you're not quite sure what you're doing. Maybe it's not going so perfect. Other times you got to walk or you got to crawl. Sometimes you got to slow down and go to the bathroom. Sometimes you got to catch a breath. Sometimes you got to eat a banana because maybe you don't have the energy. Maybe you don't have the resources. Maybe you don't have the right information at that moment. Understand, that's the way that it works in a marathon from the beginning to the end. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always a sprint. And don't feel bad about yourself or get down on yourself because it seems like everybody else is sprinting and you're the only one walking. Everybody got to go through these stages at one point or another.